all, today is the much anticipated and highly requested video of Scrape the Tip of a Bassoon Reed. The tip of the reed is the most important portion of the reed that I love to scrape because it not only affects the resistance of the reed, but it also alters the response. I do this in conjunction with using a tip profiler, but I would also do this even if I didn't have a tip profiler. I did these same three steps without a tip profiler before I owned one, and even now when I have a tip profiler after the reed begins to break in, I do these same three steps. So let me take you through what I do when I scrape a reed. The first step that I do is the crescent moon. The crescent moon at its widest at the edge of the reed is two millimeters. At its narrowest point at the very tip of the reed, it is at one millimeter. What I do is take the knife and I scrape from the left side of the reed all the way around over the edge going straight on and then going down to the right side of the reed. So I will scrape from left to right. I like to take the reed down to about 35 on the micrometer. Now by no means is this a finished dimension but because we are going to end up scraping over this again later, I like to leave it just heavy enough that it gives me that leeway to blend the scrapes together. For those of you who have been wondering how I can teach reed making via Skype, I know what this is supposed to sound like. This scrape in detail should have a set sound of the knife hitting the plaque with each stroke. If it's not hitting the plaque each time and creating a small clinking mechanism each time, then it shows me that you're not going all the way over the scrape from the very edge of the crescent moon into the plaque and that there is going to be a ridge, a high point on that cane, which is going to create a level of resistance. So each time you do this scrape, there should be a small chunking noise that happens as the cane is taken off. The second scrape that I like to do is a set of triangles. These triangles will overlap at their closest point at the tip of the reed. And just like the crescent moon, I like to move from the left side of the reed over the tip and then all the way down the right side of the reed. Now this scrape will actually go over the crescent moon and thin that crescent moon out so it is even lighter. At its widest portion of the triangle from tip down the side of the rail, it is 10 millimeters. From the angle of the point of the ear all the way down to the center of the triangle is seven millimeters. The point where the two triangles will overlap is three millimeters back from the tip of the reed. By scraping at these angles, this is something a tip profiler cannot do, and I find it gives a greater dimension of tone and colors. As one of my very early teachers said to me, when you scrape straight, you take out resistance. When you scrape at an angle, you build in tone and colors. So this is something a tip profiler can't do because a tip profiler will only take cane off straight. This is why I do this in conjunction with a tip profiler. I can say there is a pitfall to this scrape that if one does not scrape all the way over the crescent moon and hit that plaque each time with each stroke, I have seen my students end up losing a large portion of the ear of the reed simply because they will create a high point and then as I ask them to go over it and actually hit the plaque, they will catch on that high point and it will tear off a major portion of either the right or the left side of the reed. So as you do this, be sure to scrape over that crescent moon. The final scrape that I absolutely love to do builds in colors and sound and dimension, as well as it, like the previous scrape of the triangles, will remove a little bit of resistance. This next scrape is the chevron. The chevron is going to run on either side of the heart. The dimensions are going to be from 15 millimeters from the tip on the rails to 10 millimeters. It will then hit a high point in the center of that same three millimeter mark that we marked with the triangles. The chevron is the one scrape that I do that does not overlap in full with both the crescent moon and the triangles. It should blend seamlessly from the chevron into the triangles without a large ledge. Anytime there's a ledge, there will be a resistance in the sound, but this will give a density and warmth and depth to the colors that your read will offer. In essence, it will darken the sound. These are my top three tips for scraping the 
tip of a bassoonery. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know to create more scraping read videos. It helps me to know what you're interested in. If you want to keep up on all the adventures on my read desk and gigging, there is always Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos, be sure to click that subscribe button if you're not already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye! There's a lot to this story, which is actually kind of interesting. First of all, that, you know, Bach already at this early date has a clear idea of what he wants this new instrument to sound like. We know that he'd been using the earlier version of this, the Dulcian or Kirtle.